Hi, this is Dr. Rosemary Hyde. It's January 19th, and we are looking at a new group of vocabulary expressions. And But first, we're going to go over the piece that Zabi wrote and that Abu, I think, um, talked with him about so that we can see how to make it even better. It had some really good things about it. Okay, so this is what I wrote. Yes, can this you is what find you what you wrote. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll I'll do that as well. I'll just increase the size for this a little bit, uh, so we could see it a little better. That's okay. better. Yes. Yeah. And at the same time, I'll remove this part. Uh, I actually um, my laptop kind of. I do not have a laptop since three to four months, and that's oh, wow. why. Yeah, I use my phone and it gets a struggle sometimes. So here we go. I'll copy and paste the other one as well. Yes. The question is a choice question, which means mm -hmm. you need to choose one or the other. Mm -hmm. You can write a couple of sentences about the one you're not going to write about in the introduction, but then mm -hmm. you have to say, okay, I'm choosing one and say something about the one you're choosing. And then all the rest of your piece needs to be about the one you chose. So let's see how you did with that. Having lived in both rural and urban areas, I can't turn a blind eye. Now that's a nice expression, turn a blind eye. So you get extra points for that. Mm -hmm. On whole transformative and life-changing experience both places have had on me. But I think living in the city is far better than living in a remote area. Remote area, that's good too. That's good use of vocabulary. And you did a great job with that sentence with that choice sentence saying, okay, so I'm going to tell you why living in the city is good. Why I chose to talk about living in the city. Okay. Uh, there's one place in the first sentence mm -hmm. where you're missing, um, you're missing it's... an article. Okay. Do you know where it is? Uh, having lived, do you know what an article is? Uh, yeah, like uh, we actually, I actually have studied. I studied drama a long time back. Uh, like, what article I'm missing, ma'am? Is it the or a and yes. which one? The right. The. So stick it in there if you can. Okay. Uh, should I find it out myself, or you'll tell me? What? Uh, you'll tell me where should I place the article? Well, why don't you, um, can you Have move your okay. cursor? I'll, I'll, read, I'll read and find it out, hopefully. Okay, annotation, highlighter. Uh, having lived in both rural and urban areas, I cannot turn a blind eye on, on the whole, right? Good, 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 good. Yeah on the whole transformative and life-changing experience both places have had on me. Uh, there's no yes. grammatical issue, ma'am? There's no grammatical what? Uh, issue, no problem with gram grammar? Well, the problem is you didn't have the. Okay, I, I, after that, I mean, there's no other problem? No, that's it. Okay, and uh, any problem with the uh, punctuation? No, it's good. Okay. <laughs> So I don't know if you can um, insert. I will. I will insert. Actually, I noted down. This is a screenshot. Uh, I will actually have oh, to. Oh, okay, okay. I'll yeah. When I open the pay the the 
file, right? I'll take a screenshot of these age problems, which this uh, is okay. having. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the next sentence is good. I think living in the city is far better than living in, in a remote area. You need to put an in in there too. Okay, living, living in the really. city is far better than living in. In a remote area, yeah. Right. That's so first, now, mm -hmm. one of the most... One of the most reasons is okay. Uh, that's most, not very grammatically uh, correct. I actually have uh, forgot to uh, add. I'm important here. So one of the most important reasons. Oh, then it makes sense. Okay, uh -huh. good. Yeah. Okay, one of the most important reasons is educational institutions in cities, maybe. I'd put that there, mm -hmm. in cities sure. are well-equipped and or more well-equipped than in the country and up to the standards where one can thrive to become what they want. Okay, that's good. Students in the city are from a diverse background which could enhance the one's learning process. One's, uh, this is not one's. correct, right? Yes, one's. right. One's yeah. learning process at the same time with advanced. Okay, so let's, let's look at the rest of this sentence, which um, isn't really very English sounding. Where does, you've got two sentences here. Mm -hmm. So fix it. Okay, students in the city are from a diverse background, which could enhance uh, one's learning process at the same time. Okay, at the same time shouldn't be here, right? Well, that's one way of doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, learning process with advanced develop. Okay, uh, we could separate this. We could put a dot here yes. and separate the sentence. Correct. Okay, at the same time, we should, this could be separated. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Right. And an example could be added to that. Absolutely. Well, you do, you do have an example, I think. As you mm -hmm. say, yeah. for example, mm -hmm. when I joined a university in, and you need, a, you need a, an article again. So okay. you need to review articles and practice. Mm -hmm. So that that's not so it goes away as a feature of your English use. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, when I joined a university, it's not correct, right? It's okay. Mm -hmm. In yeah, in in capital of India. No, nope, no. Nope. Every now needs usually an article of some kind. Mm -hmm. So again, the article. In the in capital. Universe, of in the capital of India. Okay. okay. And then you'd need another comma. Okay. Okay, so again, the other thing that this paragraph has more than one sentence in it, but you haven't divided them. So where would you divide the sentences? Okay, well, for example, when I joined a university in the capital of India, the environment was very competitive, a lot more than uh, I was used to. Okay, for example, okay. when I joined that, that the would, university- That would be a good place to put a period. Yeah, but it's still not yeah. great as a sentence. So yeah. yeah. Sure. And the other issue would be that uh, because, uh, for example, when I joined the, univers uh, the university, a university in the capital of India, uh, the environment, it would be a repetition of the article day a lot, right? Yes, right. That's correct. 
But that has to be taken care how of. could you take the whole expression, very competitive, a lot more than I was used to? Can you make that shorter and clearer? Okay. Very competitive a lot more than I used to. Okay. Uh, okay, this would be like, uh, uh, could I use a, a, a word which could uh, show an unfamiliar experience? A word for that? Yeah. Yes, but but correct the sentence first. Like like a word like unprecedented. I what? A unprecedented. You, you might want to write it in the chat. I don't understand. Okay. Okay. It would be like... Okay, it wouldn't work. Uh, unprecedented. I don't know how... Unprecedented. UN unprecedented yeah. okay yeah. well that's kind of a very strong unprecedented really mm -hmm. that would be right? i think competitive is a good word yes thank you Abu. i think competitive is actually a better word there but what i'm looking at is very a lot more than a lot um, more than okay was just say a lot more competitive than I was used to. Okay. You don't. You don't need a lot vary. more competitive. Okay. Okay. Than I was used to. Period. Mm -hmm. And then this is the, you know, here's why it was more competitive. Um, is is this comma proper here? Is it? Uh, I mean, suitable. The comma I have given, I used to, after used to. No, put a period. It's the okay. end of the sentence. Okay. okay. I'll take care of that, okay? We had to partake. Okay. We had to partake in different experimental learning programs and projects, which enriched my learning process. Okay. That doesn't tell us why it was more competitive. What you mm -hmm. want there is an example of what was competitive about it. Okay. This is like, okay, a different thing, right? Because this is enriching your learning that is not yes. a competitive environment. Okay. Yeah. And the I will forever cherish the learning experience and memories and the impact they maybe had on me because you're talking about learning experience and memories, two things. So the pronoun it refers back to something and it refers back to two things. So you can't say it, which only refers to one thing. Uh, I will forever cherish the learning experience and memories and the impact. Okay. How do I frame it in a proper way? The impact they had on me. Okay. The impact they had on me. Okay. Okay. So you need to, you know, get us more into the story of what you experienced as competitive. You know, what was that like? Mm -hmm. What caused it? That, that should probably be, because any essay needs to be 300 words or more. And this isn't yeah. 300 words. It's like maybe 100. It's a list. Yeah. So, so where you get more words is in the details of the story, of the examples. Mm -hmm. And you really need to tell the example so that we feel what it felt like to you mm -hmm. to be in this competitive situation. And you can refer to previous education and yeah. you know, say a little bit about it too, so that we get the picture. So we understand what you felt like. Why are you saying this? So mm -hmm. then you're going on to another point. The first point is educational institutions. 
Secondly, yeah. the in a city, you get to meet a wide range of people. Yeah. And and experience rich traditions. And again, you have a, what we call a run-on sentence, which means two sentences or three sentences that you've punctuated as if they were one. So mm -hmm. you need to change um, those sentences. And again, you have several things and then you say it. So mm -hmm. that's another rule of English grammar that you need to practice. So that goes away as a problem. So you don't yeah. see that anymore. We actually, uh, I personally have a, an issue with punctuation. I actually am not good in it. If we could well, have one day a class on punctuation so we could uh, get a grasp of um, different yes. punctuations and we could then that's practice. A, yeah, that's a good suggestion. Okay, we'll do that somehow and somebody will do it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I think that Sayed is teaching grammar and this is grammar, you know, knowing where one sentence ends and another sentence begins. And also knowing what you're referring to with a pronoun so that your pronoun is correct. If we look back on what it's talking about, it's the same number, it's plural or singular, and it's, uh, it's the right person. We're talking about things. So they would be the correct pronoun here. So he could use he could do some work on that on the, when the to put a period that, is, um, that I actually know what uh, how to use the pronouns. But uh, when subtly, like uh, when it comes to talking or when it comes to writing, when it, when I go deep in a conversation or in writing, I cannot consciously, I mean, focus on what which one should I use in the basic sentences. I can notice it, but while writing okay. something like this, I can so, punch it. So you got to yeah. practice it in writing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, this is this is good because you have very specific things that you haven't learned yet, but they're very specific. Once you mm -hmm. learn them, they won't be problems anymore. That's great. Yeah. You know, some people need to go back and do a whole grammar class. For you, there's really specific things that you need to work on and learn and remove from your writing. Yeah. So, okay, do you want to scroll down a bit, please? Sure. I actually, okay. I'll have to activate the notation and take a screenshot, then I'll, okay. sure. Okay. Whatever. I got it. <laughs> Whatever mm -hmm. it takes. Uh, is it fine now? Um, no, I need to start with besides. Besides. In other words, the second point. Sure, I'll actually have to open it in WhatsApp. Yeah, I'm okay. Is it fine now? Yes. Okay. I'll scroll even when you want. Right. So you've got two points, and the two points need to be about the same length. I'll have to delete um, this, yeah. Yeah. So you, so you need to add details. So living in the city helps you to meet a whole range of people and experience rich traditions. It, there's another sentence in there, you've got to put a period. It can challenge your worldview to become a more intelligent and resilient person. Okay, so you've got a researchers, that's good. It's, it's a useful fact to put in there. I wouldn't use at the same time because it kind of indicates that you're moving on and instead of moving on, you need to develop 
the point about uh, about mm -hmm. becoming more intelligent and resilient by learning more 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 traditions. So okay. I would I wouldn't I would use a different word than at the same time. I would just say researchers believe that 60% of a person's life is determined by their zip code, which means living in a city. Okay, so um, I don't see where you can say that 60% of a person's life is determined and then talk about increasing lifespan. So rather than saying which means, I'd, researchers believe that 60% of a person's life is determined by their zip code or their neighborhood, period. Living in mm -hmm. a city can increase lifespan and raise levels of happiness and contentment. Now, that's plenty to talk about. Uh, rich and, you know, richness, wealth, prosperity, that's another whole point. That's different from increasing your lifespan. So pick one. You know, mm -hmm. living in living in the city is going to give you the chance to experience a lot of different people and ideas. And then mm -hmm. give an example. You know, you have obviously had the experience of living in a city in the capital of India, right? Yeah. So give us a story about a time when, because you were there, you had to learn something brand new that you had no idea existed. Tell us the story. And if you tell us stories, one for the first point, one for the second point, then you'll have a, a fairly good beginning on a good essay. Okay? Mm -hmm. So periods, articles. Um, Intuition, commas, and unnecessary yes. commas. Yep. And details, stories. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that will make your piece a lot better than it is. Your vocabulary seems to be reasonably good. So use it and show it off. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to see is I'd like to see you rewrite the piece and send me, um, you know, put it on WhatsApp, a piece that goes at least 250 words. Make mm -hmm. it a lot sure. longer. Yeah, I will. Okay. Thank you. Is it done? Okay. okay. Yes, we're done. Okay. So um, when you are working with someone else on their piece, first thing you need to do is find what the person did really well and tell them what you see because no one wants to just hear, you know, what they need to fix. Everyone wants to be recognized for the skills they have. So that's the first thing to do is to point out something that you think the person did really well. And there's almost always something that you can find. Um, which is like uh, always called a sandwich feedback, right? I, I can notice that in your writing when you are replying to our essays, the sandwich feedback is always there. That's right. It's a sandwich. You're absolutely right. And the two pieces of bread are things that I actually noticed in people's writing that they did really well. So then in the middle is the but, is, okay, so 
what would make this a much better piece would be, and then mention one or two or possibly three things that people can change in the piece to make it much better than it is. And then finish the sandwich with the top piece, which is something else that is good. And that way, you know, people don't mind too much having to learn something that they could do better. And it doesn't sound so impossible because there are good things that you've remarked on and that you've shared with them. It's very helpful to know how to approach um, advising someone uh, on, yes, on how to improve their writing. One of the reasons that I'm really not good in writing is that I've been actually living in India since seven years. So when I came to India, I, I uh, in order to get better in English, I switched my lifestyle to English. So even like, whatever I do, uh, like uh, when I study a lecture on my regarding my college classes, I listen to it in English. If I listen to a spiritual, uh, what do you say, sermon, uh, I, I listen to it in English. So that's how my listening is really improved. Like I can, uh, I'm, I'm really good in listening. I'm really, I'm not bad in speaking as well, but when no, it comes not. to writing, I'm not that good in it, yeah. Well, you know what? Your writing isn't terrible. Your writing will be really good with a few changes. So instead of saying my writing is terrible, just say my writing is really good, but it needs a few changes, which is true. Exactly. Like the way you talk about it, yourself determines like what you become. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why not? It's a lot easier and more, more enjoyable that way. And when we, why not? We should make things as enjoyable as possible. I, I really you? appreciate it. I mean, this is something which, uh, you know, people pay for. I really, I really appreciate this. This is like not a simple thing that someone one-on-one -on -one works with you. And, you know, I really appreciate it. And I really thank you for that, uh, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So let's let's uh, play with a few of the words from this week's vocabulary. Sure. sure. And um, then we'll be done. And I hope that this has been a useful session for you. So indeed, it was. it was indeed. I'm going to share my screen, which has this week's words, and. I added this week a sentence with each expression. So you get, you know, two, you get a way to figure out what, um, what the expression means. And it gives you something maybe to make it easier to remember. So if you look at the list of words in the table, which ones, just tell me the number, which ones are kind of new for you? I'll have to see, lower the bar. I know it, uh, seeing things, I know it, hold out, I do not know. Uh, number 15. Number 15, okay. Yeah, hold out. 15 to hold out, okay. So let's look at sentence 15. Her doctor told her to give up meat and she held out for six months before finally giving in to temptation. In other okay. words, she gave it up. To restrain from. Yeah, to okay. resist the temptation, to hang on to a decision, mm -hmm. even though it's not easy. When you mm -hmm. hold out, it means you've got reasons to give in which is the opposite of holding out. You give in, you surrender. Okay. It's okay. to resist, right? Okay, you have another word that, another expression? Yes. Uh, number seven, flare up. 
Okay, number seven, let's look at sentence seven. My doctor told me the rash on my knee was cured, but it has now flared up again. Uh, it's like, uh, it means popping out of the blue. Yeah, it's come back. It's okay. flare up means, you know, a condition, usually an unpleasant condition that mm -hmm. you thought was taken care of. And here it is again. So, okay. you know, it's like, ugh. You go through with something. It has a, it has a sense of, of um, struggle. Okay. Okay. Uh, go through with something. Go through something, I know. But go through with something. With like what I number? Know. I have to go through my phone book or my notebook to find out something, oh. right? Okay, that's not quite the same thing. Yes, if you go through your notebook, yeah, you're turning pages and looking at it. But to go through with something, it also has a sense of, okay, this was difficult, but I went through with it anyway. Let's look at the sentence. Um, sentence 10. We, we went through with our plan to have picnic despite the rain. Okay, to do something anyway. Yeah, to do something anyway. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. To go through with, to, you know, even though there might be reasons not to do it, you do it anyway, you go through with it. Mm -hmm. uh, leave no stone and turn, it means like to search everywhere. To search everywhere, right. We okay. left no stone unturned in our search for the city's best cup. And it was like searching a needle in the haystack, right? Ah, yes. Like looking for a needle in a haystack. <coughs> That's the full expression. Have and once worked cut out. What is number 19? Have once worked cut out. Okay, the sentence. If she wants to finish this drawing before the art fair, she has her work cut out for her. It really refers to, you know, a tailor uh, creating clothes. First thing they do is they cut out the pattern, but then you have to put it all together. Okay. So having your work cut out for you means, wow, it's going to take a lot of work to okay. it's like, it's like accomplish preparing something. A blueprint. Say that again. It's like uh, preparing a blueprint. Yeah, of a big job that you're under pressure, you're under time pressure. Like, well, this is going to be hard. I have my work cut out for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. She wants to finish the drawing. Okay, what else? Uh, back off, I know. Back off is to, uh, like, uh, to not continue, right? Like in a That's battle. Correct. One yes. army, back off. Right. She's having a have rough time. You need to back off. Mm -hmm. Have one's hand tied. Okay. It's like to be in a situation when you can't, you're helpless. Yes, exactly. You can't do anything because somebody else is controlling you. Okay. Ask after someone. It's like uh, when you are looking for someone and you ask uh, somebody else, uh, like, where is this person? Is this ask after someone? No, it's not, actually. Mm -hmm. It specifically refers to if someone is in pain or ill or injured and you're talking to someone close to them and you want the someone close to them okay. to know that you care about the person, you okay. ask it's after like, them. Mm -hmm. It's like to look after, right? It's, it's, like not what? To, it's not like to look after, looking after someone. No, it's not. That, it's not. The looking same after thing them that, means you're taking it, care of them. Looking asking, after someone means you're taking care of them. But, but asking, asking mm -hmm. after someone means you're letting the people know that you care and you're thinking about them. Okay, ask after so the sentence is like 
uh, like uh, for example, if my friend is sick and I see his brother in the market and I ask him, uh, like, uh, how is he? Then I, when I call him, I told, I tell him that I asked after you from your brother, right? That's right. Exactly. You got it. Yep. Hold on to cross pat. Uh, cross pat also, I know, get one's act together. It's like get one's act together means put yourself together, right? Put well, oneself. It, it means to, to get organized. So, yeah. you can, so you can finish something, or accomplish something. The mm -hmm. sentence is number 20, we need to get our act together. Or another expression that means the same thing. We need to get our ducks in a row, one or the other. If we're going to finish this by Friday, okay. we got to really, you know, get everything, know what we're doing and get it organized. Mm -hmm. Seeing things. Yeah. Seeing things. Which one? Which what number? And number three. I oh, could that's have... a good, that's a good one. Yes. Seeing things. Look at the sentence. I could, number three, I could have sworn I saw him walk into the office 10 minutes ago, but he's not here. I must have been seeing things. Okay, it's like when you're daydreaming or you're uh, kind of, you know, not daydreaming, but like when you are uh, hypnotized, you know, when you are yeah. thinking that you're not in a normal state. You're thinking something happened when it doesn't seem that it did. Okay. This is a good one. Yeah, this is a good one. Lower the bar. Uh, it's like to put, make the standard lower, right? That's exactly right. Yes. And the... Uh, Holds. Mm -hmm. What? No, the, the uh, uh, image, the image for lowering the bar is like a race where people jump over things. If nobody can jump over, something, you lower the bar, which means yeah. you make the standards less demanding. Mm -hmm. It has a little bit Number of a, it has a little bit of a negative connotation. Yeah. So it's like when you tell someone when you want to uh, like uh, make them feel, uh, you know, less then you tell them, okay, I'll, I'll the low, lower the bar for you. There you go. Yes, precisely. Right. And number nine. Number nine, to hold sway. Let's look at the sentence. The Dutch, this is a historical statement about New York. The Dutch held sway in New York until 1664 when the English took control. Held sway, having control. That's right. Exactly. You've got it. So this is how I sway means you're in control. And like uh, when I read books, uh, when I read books, sometimes I encounter certain words which I do not know. So most prob most of the times I can guess it in a right way. That's because right. of the You're good at that. You do it very well. And that's awesome because that's a really good skill for learning more ways to say things. Mm -hmm. Keep doing it. It's fun to play this with you. <laughs> <laughs> Lay claim to property. Well, yeah, uh, we're having fun, aren't we? <laughs> mm -hmm. 12. My well, sister always laid claim to the, to the top bank bed. So I was stuck on the bottom. Okay. okay it's like yeah. when you are always, uh, when you, when someone is like, uh, Demanding a place, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, whoever lays claim to something, usually it means you can't argue with them. Okay, it's like it's not. It maybe they are they are right to do that, or it's like just. I mean, it's a fact. And what she's talking, what the, this person is talking about, is something that Americans all have seen: bunk beds. There are mm -hmm. beds one on top of the other. That's a bunk bed. Okay, so whoever is more, uh, you know, uh, mischievous or how do I say it? 
who who is more in control who, who that person takes the bid, right? It's not their right. Yes. Yeah. And usually the person who's more in control lays claim to the top book. Mm -hmm. Because Hold on that. the top on the top, yes, mm -hmm. you risk falling and hurting yourself, but <laughs> Nobody's going to make noise on top of you. Nobody's going to drop anything on you. And it's a much more peaceful place to be. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I was little and we'd go on to a vacation place, I always laid claim because I was the oldest. I always laid claim to a top bunk. <laughs> <laughs> That's always what happens to the younger ones, you know? Exactly. Right. Yep. We talked of 15, right? What? Yes, 15 is done. Uh, 16, run into something. It's like into it's like bumping into something, right? Run into. Bumping into is another way of saying that. Yeah. You don't expect to, to meet up with someone and there they are. You mm -hmm. run across them or you bump into them. Either way, it's a good way to say it. Get all one's ducks in a row. It's the same thing as? Get the I, same, exactly the same thing as get your act together. Yeah. Yes. It's a kind of a funny image. Get your ducks in a row. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's not necessarily easy. But if you, if you act the right way, the ducklings all follow in a row. But if you try to herd them, it doesn't work. <laughs> they, won't exactly. they may end up hurting you back. Yep. So there's a new question for this week's homework. And what I want, did I put the question? I I did. Yes, the question is there. Uh, okay, the question is not there, no. The question is there below. Oh, okay. Why some, some say the progress is generally positive? Others say there are many negative consequences. So some people like new things and other people don't. Which, yeah. view, which view do you hold? And give relevant reasons and examples. And I asked people this time to just do the fishbone structure. In other words, you're not gonna tell the stories, just write the introductory sentences for each part. Because once, once you've done that, the rest of mm -hmm. it's kind of easy. If you have picked something that you've experienced. Yeah. Can I do right. the old one? Like, can I complete my old one? Like uh, that one, I have, I'll have to complete then come to this one. Or should I do this one? Well, this one isn't going to take you too long. You can do them okay. both. I'll have to do only the first part. I mean, it's up to you, but it's actually com correcting the one you already wrote, making it better is a good learning experience. You know, it really, really helps you to move ahead. Yeah, because that one, I already know the mistakes and I know yeah. what is wrong with that one. Exactly. And so we have actually worked doing it will get it into your head better. Yeah. So I, that's really important. And this doesn't take that long. I mean, you know, what, what I want to have happen is for everybody who's doing this to be able to you know, plan a, an essay, answering any question, boom, 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 just do it really fast. Exactly. Like, uh, mm -hmm. it's like you have to know the, uh, like the frame in which you put the essay so that That's whatever right. you're given, a generic format has to be in your head and you should yeah. be able to apply it. Precisely. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's one of the really important basic skills. So that's all I'm asking for for next week. Yes, I'll, I'll try to do it. Okay. 
Yeah, we have, thanks so much. Uh, well, what should I call you, ma'am? You can call me Dr. Rosemary or Rosemary oh. or, you know, teacher Rosemary or whatever. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> because in oh. Afghanistan, we actually, in, in, in Eastern culture, we actually, uh, we take names and everything very seriously. Because like, uh, it's like, I, that shouldn't be in that level which it is. Uh, but in Afghanistan, it is like, because in, in Western world, you can call, call someone by their name, not in their school, but outside of that, you can call people by their names, even if they are older. But in Afghanistan, it's, it's very disrespectful to call people by their names. So that's why, I'm, mm -hmm, yeah. You never call people by their names, especially when they're older than you. You have to call them uncle. Uncle. Yeah, you have to call them uncle or auntie. Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm. The uh, I don't know what part of Africa this, this custom comes from, but people who are of African descent in the United States, they do that. They call older people either auntie or uncle. Mm -hmm. I, I really even to the fa father and mother no the, but uh, other people that they're not related to but that are friends or friends I of the family thinking, uh, like in Afghanistan uh, to father and mother the respect is to an extent which uh, takes away that loving relationship between you know you can never yeah. tell it's like over disciplining the children that's like something which uh, a child when goes through trouble they can never share it I can tell you that that's happening because you that's a dictatorship you know <laughs> in the family so that was something which is um, which is not in the western world as I have experienced that's so, true yeah. and that's that would make a very interesting discussion I think Indeed. You know, what <laughs> what different countries and cultures do about that. Another in the Southern part of the US where we live now, um, another way of dealing with that is older people you call miss or mister with their first name. So I would be Miss Rosemary. Okay. M-I-S-S, -S, right? That's also a way of showing respect. Okay. Uh, like uh, when I, if I call you Miss Rosemary, that M I, that will be M I double -S, S, right? The Miss one. Yeah, that would be just oh. fine. Okay, thank you so much, Miss Rosemary. Thank you. Is is it okay if I just call you Zabi? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, I get to do yes. that because I'm a teacher. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, like like uh, I mean, uh, in Afghanistan, especially in traditional. Uh, like a person who has taught you a single word, even if they are not your teacher, if they are someone who is just your neighbor but teaches you something, you learn something from them, you, ha you have the utmost respect to them. And you, whatever you call me, I mean. <laughs> well, I've, I've noticed that a lot of people call me teacher, Rosemary. And I, I understand that as a term of respect. It's not something that we have, but it's understandable exactly. you know, and, and that's fine mm -hmm. because I think, I think that being a teacher is a sacred relationship. Indeed. Like being a parent or being an auntie. Yeah. <laughs> Okie doke. So thank you for this discussion.